Hello there, lovely soul. This is Infinity and it is 2.12 in the Pacific on February 21st, 2021. Wow. Numbers today. Holy moly. So yeah, 2.12 on 2.21, 2021. The numbers have been lining up that way when I get triggered to begin something and um, earlier it was the Archangel Oracle when I started that and now it's the meditation that I've been uh, kind of waiting on on doing and this one is a meditation for working with um, well I know we're gonna be working with Gaia If you're new to me and my meditations, uh, I'm Infinity. I'm a psychic, physical empath, medical medium, natural born energy healer, soul guide, ascension coach, astral meditation guide, and I channel and go as guided for pretty much everything that I do. And uh, I work very, very tightly and closely with the uh, angelic realms, your guardian angels, spirit tribe, um, archangels, and Gaia most closely, really kind of uh, pushing the buttons on what I do. And we've been putting out a series of really amazing uh, healing, self healing meditations for the last um, week or so. And They've been really powerful. I hope that you know of them, have have checked them out, have done them. If you haven't, please do, please do so. Uh, In order is ideal. I think they came out in a particular order for a reason, but you go as guided for however it works for you. They were clearing abundance and healing the money wound. The other one was uh, love body love activation and meeting with your guardian angel. The next one was, uh, healing and integrating with your inner child. And now we're going to be doing this one, which is about clearing and healing the wounds for fear and shame and guilt and judgment and, um, all of that is a, is a big, 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 big deal, right? In our lives, we're so reactionary and emotional and we learn from fear and fear um, is instilled in us in different ways, right? And it's just, um, it really can be a, a tool for holding us back in so many, so many ways. It's so, It's always fear. It's always fear in some way when it comes to uh you know, us not doing something or, um, being pushed to do something, uh, either way, usually fear, uh, brings us anxiety and stress. Uh, If we're in fear for, because we don't have enough money, because, uh, time is running out on something because of our health, because of shelter, because of food, because of just the basics, we're afraid and, and fearful and stressed about other people and those things for them and the world. And, and we're afraid of what's going to happen next. And I mean, this can just go on and on. And, and there's this whole thing with being mindful and being positive and taking care of ourselves. And, And that is most certainly the way we want to go, but we really have to get out of our heads, um, clear the things that make us afraid, clear the things that are attached to uh, triggers that set us off in different ways, either from just normal happenings in the world or, uh, you know, things that that other people uh, trigger in us. Sometimes it doesn't take a whole lot for us to uh, for something to happen and for us to react in a certain way. Um, it's just kind of kind of what happens um, at times. But here's the thing: if we uh, if we are cleared of negative energy to a great extent from our body, the deep stuff. 
uh, then that won't get so easily activated because it won't just take a feather to hit the button for it to explode, right? Because there isn't so much pressure already there. It'll take a bunch of bricks to hit that button before you're, you know, something, you know, sets you off. And that's the thing, you know, people that have anger management, people that, that do easily fluctuate in, in their energies and in their moods, they have all of these, these triggers, these buttons that are nearly pushed. And then it doesn't take much uh, energy at all to touch those, those triggers, those knots of energy and pull on them and cause um, pain in the body, a reaction in the body is, is the way that I see it. So, so anyway, um, it came to me that, uh, I should do this, do this meditation for the, um, for the collective. Uh, and it is about, um, yeah, just that clearing, clearing the lower level energies. And, and then yesterday, uh, I was guided to, and if you watch my video, I just posted the one before this one would be, uh, Archangel Oracle messages. And then I was also guided to, uh, pull a card for, from the hidden worlds Oracle. And I pulled the mother awakens. And this card really made me think about the full card in the tarot, but specifically the full card for, uh, or from the, uh, the light seers tarot. And it's the, the, this picture is, I'm going to have it as part of the, the graphic for this because it's, it's really, uh, that's the, that's the energy that we need to take into this into this healing, this self-healing, this meditation. She's standing on a cliff and she's her back is to the cliff and she's falling backwards into a beautiful uh, um, star of life, or sorry, flower of life. Uh, she's holding an amethyst and she just her eyes are closed and she's just faithfully falling backwards knowing that the universe will take care of her, that she is starting a new path, a new beginning, a new re uh, rebirthing. And that's what this time has been about, is is about uh, turning us into something new, evolving from the old into the new, going to this new shift in energies and this new paradigm with uh, a whole new set of energies within us, healed from a lot of things that have held us back, gone through certain things taking place in her life and um and we we really want to start off as the fool so I haven't really worked out exactly and we want you listen to this I'll have the exact title for this but um but it really is that fool energy that new beginnings the letting go the having faith and and really falling in to the mother to care for us to have that faith that Gaia and everyone that's attached to us on both sides of the veil are working for for our ascension and even if we have opposition in the real in our real world in the real life even if things try to get in our way to keep us and test us and make sure that we're we are where we need to be and that we um we're aware of the different influences that come into our lives and all that, but we're, we still go step by step and one foot in front of the other and know that we're, we're meant to, to go forward as the fool. So anyway, let's get into, I want to read the, the mother awakens. If you already listened to this from my other video, take another listen here. Cause it really, I want this to kind of set our mood for the, um, the meditation and it is 222 now here on the 21st so we're doing this so we can really set ourselves up <clears throat> for this portal and the full moon coming up and of course the new stargate in march the 33 stargate starting um on 33 through 313 which is another new moon on our landing day for march so 
let's not get too far ahead of ourselves and keep it in the now with February because there's still a lot going on here. But this is all setting us up the, these first couple months, January and February, really setting us up with this all of this energy and this work. Um, the stellium, the, the Aquarius stellium that we just had, six planets in Aquarius, the that the new moon and um, Mercury in retrograde really working to take care of us before we move forward. All right, with that said, let's get into this Oracle card, card number three with the Mother Awakens, Compassion, Nurture, Guidance. You are being given the opportunity to feel the pure love and compassion of the mother through the connection to her heart through the rainbow. The rainbow energy is profound. It speaks of hope and healing through each of the energetic centers within the bodies, our chakras. The seven rays of light, we all need to become our best selves. And the sense that you are being chosen by the mother at this time to awaken to her and to your own capacity to open the door that lies between the worlds. You are walking this rainbow path and can be called home to the mother. This can sometimes reveal the path to the other life and a return to the mother in that sense. But this is truly more often a return to the memories of a time when the mother sends out her healing heart light in the form of rainbows to all that need her support and her guidance. You're returning to her and while the father is present, he is less activated for you at present. Be in her presence and know it makes no difference to her who you are or what judgments have been laid at your feet or the way in which our culture seeks to label and define us. To her, you are pure and perfect and whole and fully deserving of all her love. You exist and are her child and she will guide you now and embrace you with her loving heart energy. Your own heart will open and respond in return and judgments will fall away. Be replaced with compassion, understanding and the true belief in your own worth. An illumination. Uh, you are worthy of the compassionate of this compassionate mother love. Let her heal all mother wounds and show you how precious you are. So there we go. This beautiful energy coming from Gaia. Um, when I started working and she started coming through and channeling through me. She, she would always refer, and she still does, she refers to us as her babies, and uh, she, she's known us through every incarnation that we've had here. She recognizes our soul regardless of the bodies that we're in. So she has such profound insight in, in our journeys. She knows she works with us in a very conscious level. Uh, through the High Council and that entire group of of archangels and planetary beings like her, uh, and especially from our own solar system family, and then you know the planets that have so much influence on us—they're all family. Gaia is a sentient being who is a planet, and the other planets are all sentient beings who are who are the planets that are all part of the the family, and so. Um, they all have such influence. I mean, that's what, I mean, people, I don't think really see it, it to that extent, but if you tap in with Gaia and the realness of her existence, being a sentient being who can speak to you, who knows you, who understands you. Um, and I work with her all the time in this way because she comes through me, uh, to do the healings that I do and, um, and to do the guided astral meditations and, and all that stuff. So, uh, but before, before she started to come through to me like that, I, I hadn't really, I think I was very much like most people hadn't really thought about our, our planet being a sentient being and having, um, a, a, an extreme awareness. I mean, if we're talking about an ascended being, you have to be highly ascended and evolved 
uh, energetically to go in, to be the energy, to be the life force that creates and holds everything on a planet like like earth like what she is and so that that takes uh, a certain type of of energy and and being in the universe to have that and that's why we can look out through our through our solar system and see that you know for this particular type of energy it, i mean it's not just around every corner um but in our solar system at this time um we they've all gone through different cycles of of different ways in which they've created and had life and and um gaia has been the you know the 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 one in the family that's had this uh, responsibility to carry life in this way in a very different way than than the rest of the family so anyway we have had a lot of support lately with all of their presence um, not all of their presence well we always have all their presence but in the one sign of Aquarius has been very very uh, important and and special <laughs> for the energies that have come through and when and how. So we go forward into this uh, with the understanding that, that we're going to be looking to connect with Gaia, receive this beautiful rainbow light and whatever else may happen, have the energy of starting off like the fool from this point forward, especially, um, hopefully you'll be able to, to get this and do this as close to the 222 portal or on the day. Uh, but anytime after is fine too, and feel free to do it more than once, of course. And, um, just know that, uh, your intention to connect and heal and however which ways we get going here uh, anytime that you're guided to do it is the right moment and a couple more things just this is a seated uh, meditation so please sit up you can always lay down after and take a little nap if you want to but for this meditation please be seated if you can be in a uh, on the floor or a uh, seated in the cross-legged position that would be great. We want to have your body nice and and straight with your spine core engaged, shoulders back. And these meditations tend to be very energetically intense, uh, really working with the body. So if you get uh, itchy or feel like you need to move, feel free to do that. You don't have to stay still. Just try to keep your eyes closed so you can stay in that in that. Um, kind of astral plane because um, that's that's kind of difficult for most people when they open their eyes and stuff to uh, to get back in so if you're uncomfortable at all energetically or itchy or feel you need to move or whatever you can most certainly do that but just try to keep your eyes closed all right and with that said we're gonna get going okay take a few cleansing breaths here first and foremost we want to call in our guides and guardians our angelics our guardian angels all the angels that work with us archangels our spirit guides our divine uh, guides and guardians and just really take a moment here just to yourself invite them in take a few stabilizing breaths and really breathe into the heart really feeling the heart chakra starting to get activated here with our loving support system so it's just first just tap into that heart chakra energy right in the center of our hearts and we can feel it the exact same spot in our back so that would be where our shoulder blades are and we want to tap into that part of our bodies 
and just see those um, those lines down our shoulder blades and open them up just like opening up zippers allowing for the heart chakra energy to flow out they're called our energetic wings from our heart chakras and they are necessary for our comfort to be able to let that energy go out of the back because their uh, heart chakra energy is very similar to our third eye energy whereas the capacity for the in for the for the the intensity and the bigness and the infinite amount of of energy and the high vibrational energy that can come through there is really uh yeah infinite <laughs> so we need to be so it just rises in frequency it just gets clearer and clearer and clearer that heart chakra um energy and it can just be it can actually be uncomfortable in the body either in the chest the chest can feel really tight like it's even hard to breathe and then the back and the shoulder blades can really get painful very be very 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 sore and painful a lot of people deal with this and they have no idea why and it is heart chakra energy so we want to think about opening up those channels um, right on either side of your spine and just imagine just pulling down the zippers and telling your heart chakra can leave that area of the body and just let them unfold from the body or however it feels to you And just continue to breathe into your body, into your heart chakra, feeling that energy go through your shoulders, up into your neck. The heart chakra energy will be felt up into the jawline. It'll go straight past that and blend with the throat chakra, but it doesn't just stay right there in the chest. It gets really big, goes through the arms, out the hands. Um, for those of us who are healers, we really heal with our heart chakra energy. That is also why we most, uh, I work with mostly when it comes to specific healing with Archangel Raphael. He is that green light, that heart light centered um, chakra color for a reason because that's the love energy, the unconditional love energy, and that is the energy that we use to heal. So just really, really tap in there. I'm just really feeling that so, so intensely right now. We really need to get into our love, into our unconditional love for ourselves. If we're going to heal, especially from painful things, we really need to offset those energies. Fear is the lowest vibration we can feel. Love is the highest vibration we can feel. So makes sense. We're starting here. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do to start off this meditation. Um, it really gets the energy going and clears us of negative energy. Uh, so if you're up against anything really close to the front of you, you wanna back up and give yourself some room because what we're gonna do is take a few really, really uh, deep, deep breaths. Um, not, It's not gonna be a whole lot of it, but uh, this helps clear out the air element from our bodies because we tend to just breathe from the upper like half of our lungs and and not go super super deep in there so uh this is a a really easy way to clear out some energy and get the bodies um going as far as getting ready for for alignment and travel so what you do is you just normal breathing and then you take a deep breath and then you hold it I'm gonna do it so don't try to do it don't follow me just yet so you hold it and then you push out all the air from your lungs it helps to really bend over and push 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 and I'll show you how to do this but first you have to take a nice long breath in it's not fast like like that it's long in and long out so here we go so just watch me first Hold it, and 
them out. And then in. Hold it. All the way out. All the way in, hold it. And then normal out. And then just let the body stabilize. <laughs> So it's really, it's, it's a really, it feels really cool in the head and then the body when you do this might get a little lightheaded. It's nothing crazy. So let's do that sequence. It's all the, it's normal, kind of push out and then push in and in and, and push it, like really bring it in and then all the way out. And you do that through the times. So we're going to do this together now. Okay. Count of three. One, two, and three. Hold it, and then out. And then in. Hold it, and then out. In. Hold it. And then out normally. Breathing normally here. There you go might make your scalp tingle, your face tingle. Point here is, and hopefully that feels really good to you. It's just a really good thing to do also whenever you just really need to clear the body of some energy, get back into body, really pay attention to yourself. Just bend over really hard, get it all out and come up really, really strong, get nice and straight, hold it and then breathe out. You could do that as many times as you want, but I'm always guided to do it that like those three times and then get back to normal here. Let's check in with the body. Let's get back in with our chakras here now. Let's really feel the energy with that heart. Hopefully it doesn't feel so tight if it did. So we're allowing for the energy to go through and we're really working that the tightness may be in the, in the lungs. Sometimes we just breathe really shallowly, you know, we just those shallow breaths and not paying attention to our breathing and breathing is so important. Take these nice cleansing breaths and really work with our breathing. That's our life force. If we didn't have our air element, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have our heart to, to beat, right? So it's really important. Okay, so hopefully that's relaxed you. I feel a little bit more blissed out since doing that, especially since I did it twice. Let's just take a moment here. Okay, now I'm being guided to let's go into the root chakra. Let's pay attention to that. So let's just really wash away everything else and just go down into the root chakra, down at the very, very base of our spine, down at our seat and our butts. And just see that and feel that as just a little glowing red energy blob. And we're gonna tap in and just tell that energy of the root chakra, that beautiful red colored energy of the root to really start to uh, activate and get bigger and even get that, um, I call it fluffy energy where it just really just starts to expand and let it expand out of the body like you're sitting on your root chakra little cloud so you can like really feel it, really sit on it. 
and then feel the energy to start to flow down your legs like just uncorking the energy from your pelvis and your and your butt to your legs and just letting the energy flow just imagine that beautiful red glowing energy flowing down your legs through your knees down your lower legs, your calves, your chins, down to and through your ankles and feet. And just let the energy flow from your feet, opening up your feet chakras, just letting it go. And just let that energy get pretty big, like I'm seeing it, like we wanna let it get as big as we can from um, outside of the body. And then let's just see a little line of light sparking and going up to the sacral since the root chakra is getting so big, it's sparking the sacral. Orange in color. Let's open that up. Let's really think about that. Turning up the energy, the saturation. And letting that get big and fluffy and blending in with that root. Feeling Gaia coming in. She's saying that she's sending us these beautiful rays of the rainbow for our different chakras so we can tap in and really feel those energies and these pulses coming up for each of our chakras. So she says we're going red, yellow, sorry, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, vi uh, indigo, violet, and she's just going around in circles. She's just showing me like, even like, um, she's like tapping on crystals. And of course, the, the co corresponding colors, so whatever comes to you for those colors, she says, that could be personal, so whatever whatever red so I'm seeing like for me I'm seeing either a, a sunstone or red rubies um that kind of thing or red emeralds um and you can just you know whatever crystals are coming to you for the different um chakras but she's like tapping she's showing me um, these crystals in front of her and she's tapping on the different crystals activating um the rainbow light within her crystalline body sending up these energies to us so um she says she's just going one ding 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 these beautiful vibrations be beautiful frequencies for each one to help us um tap in and open up so let's move on to the solar plexus solar plexus with that yellow i'm feeling her tapping on citrine beautiful citrine to tap into to help us tap in with our solar plexus so if you could just see that she's just tap 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 just getting us online with that citrine and feeling into our core there into and through and around the belly button that whole area it's going to go up into the chest and down into the um, lower abdomen and we want to get it nice and big again and fluffy and each time she's chiming on the crystal we're just getting pulses of this energy we may start to get extra itchy in the body since all this energy is coming in and flowing for us and through us and just breathe through it if you feel any pressure or tightness in the head or the chest body anywhere just please take note and, and send your awareness directly to that spot and say, I release and I receive the whole mantra. I release, I receive, I remember, I rise. So, but if you feel any, any pain or any tightness throughout this practice, just say, I release and I receive and just tell your body to let go because we'll get a lockdown on the physical for the energy that's trying to move because the body's not sure sometimes what's going on, especially if you're not used to this sort of thing. So, so the body will, will try to hold on because it's, it's just doing what it knows. 
So you just have to say and tell the body, I release and I receive, and then the body will uh, comply with what you want because you're in control. Okay, so letting that solar plexus get nice and big. Uh, we want to see it even like an inner tube around us. So let it get really, really, really big. And <laughs> she's showing me, yes, really see it like an inner tube around you. So really coming out of the body. And you can take your perspective to outside of yourself. So you're just standing there looking at you and your heart chakra is so big with the green and your wings are coming out and they're and they're just rainbow light just shimmering from them. Um, even though their core is, is the green, the heart chakra, that love energy taps into all of their frequencies. So you could see that. And then we have that inner tube of the, of the solar plexus around us with that citrine. She's still ding, ding, ding. She's dinging on the solar plexus with her energy, sending out the pulses of energy with the citrine so we can um, feel that and embed ourselves more with the abundance matrix that is all about the crystals because that that is um, at the core of, of what she is is she's so many different things but it, when it comes to her the highest vibrations that she has within her body that is her abundance matrix or better known as the crystalline grid and where all of her crystals come from pieces of of her of her crystalline body um, that we can connect to to help us with our crystalline body so so she's just like playing this beautiful this beautiful song from root up so let's go up um, again to our heart chakra she's going to whoa that just got intense she has a totally different frequency she's starting to ding 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 it's almost like seeing uh what are those things um oh i can't think of the name of it it's a um i can see it, it has the different panels and you and you hit it with the with the little gong thing <laughs> i don't know what it's called but i can see it i can't the, the word isn't coming to me, but that's kind of like what she's doing. She's just like taking each one and tap, tap, tapping them. It's beautiful frequency song Energy's coming up. So each time it's just this ring of light ring of energy. And each time it like hits each one of the chakras as she's going around. So she wants us to go, I'm feeling the throat now. She wants us to go up into the throat with that beautiful sky blue color with our throat chakras. Now the throat, will feel it, of course, in the throat, down into the chest, even into our shoulders, up in and through the face, our ears with our throat chakra. So she's doing that. So I'm feeling blue sapphire and even like lapis lazuli and blue spinel, just these beautiful blue um, aquamarine, just these beautiful blue crystals. She says, whatever's coming to you. So just feel the vibrations she says i'll i'll it's changes for everybody so she's just showing me different ones so whatever ones you're resonating with right now you can see that crystal feel that crystal she says she really wants you to tap in with the energy of each crystal whatever you see coming to you into the throat and just breathe into the throat feel any type of tightness she says ding 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 staying with the blue staying with the blue she says opening up just see that whole energy center just opening up going out like you have a scarf and the scarf is coming loose 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 and just suspending there really really big like another inner tube around your throat opening up opening up tapping into those energies of the crystals remember we she says remember you are of me i am crystalline and so are you we're we, we are the same even though we look so different you are my child you are my babies 
So when I tap into my body and you're listening to tap in and hear me, I, I connect with you so deeply to heal you so you can feel my love, feel my guidance, feel my support, know my love, know that there's so many illusions that keep us separated from each other and you and your brothers and sisters. The world can be so chaotic and confusing, especially recently. She says, you've been doing so, so good, so good lately, so good. You've been trying so hard to rise above it, to let go of your fear and resentments and guilts and, and chaos. She says, this is a time we're meeting here now because we want to let go of the chaos in a very, very healthy way. She says, and then I'll take that chaos from you. The chaos that is fear and pain and judgment and ridicule and, and shame and abandonment and, um, feelings of being unworthy or feeling like an imposter, people um, laying judgments at your feet, people putting and impressing upon you energies that really have nothing to do with you. And, and, and these things taking residence inside of the, inside of the home that is your body. And one of the things we can do is tell our bodies, to release these energies because we can we can hand them over as we tap in to um to gaia she wants us to work with that rainbow so she says here just keep working with your throat chakra this tends to be such a tight spot when it comes to these emotions because we tend to lock down she's showing me that people just they can't breathe that they're trying to speak but they have no voice that it's very hard to express or to even get expression to come in because everything is shrouded with this chaos she says, look at the sky. She wants us to, to see us like, um, where are we? Um, we're like on a, uh, on, t on a big rocks, uh, above a desert plain. So it's just open, 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 and it's desert, but we're sitting up on rocks and can see very, very far. So let's take yourself there. It just popped in real, real quick. <laughs> says continue to breathe into that throat chakra I'm gonna stay here with us she says I want you to see yourself perched up on on this rock this big boulder and she says I want you to look to your left and look to your right and see that all oh, there's big big long there's a long like circular like half moon circular just boulders and you can see you can't really make out who's next to you on either side but you can see that that, that going out really, really far on the left and really, really far on the right. Um, we're looking about maybe bol our boulders are a good maybe 30, 40, 50 yards apart from each other. So we have a lot of room here. Um, but on each boulder set of, uh, of rocks and boulders, we have another one of us, another one of us light workers, another one of us incarnates, whether you're a star seed, an earth angel, or otherwise a fae, a dragon incarnate, um, and you and you are sitting on your boulder, you're in your cross-legged position. She says, I want you to look down at yourself and see your big fluffy chakras floating out and big around you. I want you to see your brothers and your sisters to your left and your right and their chakras the same way so you really tight can't make out who they are but you can see their energy you can see that they're doing this too and everybody has come here to do this 
uh, to work on these lower level energies and to work with Gaia, to connect with her, to allow for her to come in and support us and take care of us, just like a mother would if we were sick, she says. She's showing me a scene with us in bed and us not feeling good and being sick. Low energy. Just not feeling good. Headache, stomach ache, fever even, coughing, just sick, she says. And she says, and, and I mean, I just think of, of, of me, your mother, coming in and taking care of you. She says, please think about it that way. And you allowing me to take care of you, to, to give you medicine, to give you um, healthy healing love, to give you nurturing food, to put a humidifier in the room so it helps you, you to breathe, to bring you soft tissues to blow your nose, to um, rub your back to soothe you. She's showing me all these things that a loving mother would do if we don't feel good. Hold us, caress us, sing to us. She says, I want you to think about what you're doing here with me like that. And when we're sick, sometimes, especially when we're children, we're scared. We feel like we may always feel that way. It'll never go away. We're scared. We're missing out, you know, whatever the case is. And she says, I want you to just let me hold you and support you through this and hand over those fears of, of it always being this way, because it's not always going to be this way. As you know, for the most part, when we get sick with whatever it is, we do get better. We do get better. So let's just take a moment here. Still feeling the this pressure in and with the throat as we're moving in though with the third eye. So let's get up into that. Just breathe in, sending light and energy up into the third eye because it's getting a lot of pressure up in here. So just breathe into that. If you feel it in the ears, the front of the head, the back of the head, third eye with that indigo beautiful in between blue and violet, the indigo of the third eye. I just see that activating, taking your awareness to the right in the center of your brain as though it had an eyelid. You want to open that up and breathe. And she says, I'm continuously sending these pulses. She says, when we get into the third eye, I want you to she goes, I want you to see it like, um, she's showing me fluid. Oh, this is very interesting. She's showing me like a little glass jar instead of a crystal this time. She's showing me this, this glass jar of, it's like this beautiful violet. She's shut, um, she says they're, uh, essence, essence of flowers that are front, that are all of this beautiful indigo color. So if you can think about the flowers in the world of Gaia that she's created that are of this beautiful purpley indigo color, violets, of course, and um, I'm seeing different orchids and just different, just all sorts of different color, oh, flowers I don't even know the names of, but whatever's coming to you. And she said, but it's fluid. It's the essence. It's the, it's the oils and the, and the beauty and the scent, the liquidy parts of the, of the flower, the magic essence. She says the magic essence. And she's just showing me like, like holding this beautiful bottle and just kind of moving it around. So you can see it fluid inside, fluid inside. She says, I want you to think of your third eye chakra as this little vessel of this magic essence, this fluid. And what is that? She says, these are flowers and flowers are of me. They're the expression of magic, of creation, this beautiful indigo of all of these flowers that you uh, know of in, in, cre in my creation here upon my body. 
and think about how pure and magical that is. Tapping in, she says, just opening up your third eye to the nature, the nature of me. And feeling your third eye is this beautiful, fluid, liquidy, magical essence and and um, able to permeate throughout your, your body. She says, if you just let it go and let it flow, like just take the bottle, she says, and I'm just like pouring the bottle in and through your entire head and cranium over your, your brain. And she says, we just want to make this so, so fluid here and open and flow and connecting with your, the rest of your body. So just really see this energy from your third eye, just kind of pouring down, going down the body through the face to the, to the throat and just letting it permeate and, and mingle with the throat chakra and going down to the heart. Uh, mixing in with that energy through the arms and the wings and the chest going down to the solar same thing and really extending out of the body and just really wrapping yourself up in this beautiful energy from your third eye all the way down solar plexus sacral going down to your sacral same thing just seeing this beautiful light and fluid energy from the third eye she says she wants you to now, now i see it like a fountain so your third eye just turning into this beautiful fountain of of indigo energy And it's just coming up, bubbling up. She goes, we really just want to feel into this, open it up, let it flow. She says, maybe lately your nose has been running, you've been sneezing, this kind of thing. It's because you really do want it, need to release. The body is trying to raise in frequency. So it really does help to feel into your third eye as something very fluid. So the pressure's released. Um, and if you get headaches and pressure in your head, you really want to get in there with, with some real intention of working that, that third eye into not being so tight and pressured in the head. So right now, if you're feeling pressure in the head, just imagine the top of your head just opening up like a flower blossoming and just opening up the top of your head and letting the, the inner come out. So like a, the way a, uh, I'm going to start to sneeze and stuff now because it's working the way that the, that a fountain will come up and like turn on and you'll see the, the mechanisms come up. And then all of a sudden the fountain, the, <laughs> excuse me, will start to go. So you want to see the fountain coming up out of the top of your head and just letting it flow, opening up like a fountain or a fountain in a lotus. You can also see that lotus. And let it just flow over and around you with that third eye. You really want to work that. Very good. She says, good job. It might feel a little pressure and then release and you might get sneezy or any of that. <laughs> get start sneezing. Just let it go. Don't try to lock down. Just let, let it flow because that's what you're doing. It's, it's coming awake and opening up. Very good. And uh, lastly, we just want to pay attention and think about our crown chakras right above our head. Think about that violet light, like a funnel opening up with the crown chakra, that halo. And she says, just like the crown right above the head, I want to light it up and, and see and feel and emanate that energy from the top of your head all the way out.
infinite with the energy coming from the top of the head going all the way out in all directions. Okay, very, very good. And just take yourself to the outside position, seeing yourself uh, from the outside in, lit up with these beautiful chakras, so big and fluffy around you, and that beautiful third eye just permeating around you, going and intermingling with your other chakras to really help get you online to feel and get your awareness and your knowing through your entire system. And again, tapping in with Gaia. Oh, xylophone. I think it's a xylophone. So she's showing me again with those um, those five crystals, the, the root, the sacral, the solar, the heart, and the throat. Just ding, 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 ding. So if you can feel that and just these pulses and, and to see your, however you may see or feel that, but it's just these pulses of those corresponding energies coming up from below and just letting it travel and vibrate up the body. So be the, the root and then just these, just the frequency of that red coming up around the body and then the, the sacral and the frequency of the orange coming up and around the body. And then with the solar, with the yellow and that energy coming up and going around the body. And with the heart, with the green, seeing and feeling that pulse of energy come up and go around the body. And then with the throat and the sky blue, feeling that energy hit and come up and around the body. Lighting up the rainbow inside of you, she says. So see yourself as a beautiful rainbow. One of her, she says, you're one of my rainbows. I send out my rainbow love to you so we can heal you on a very deep level and let go of fear. She says, remember you're sitting on that boulder. Your brothers and sisters are next to you and you can see the pulsing of the energy come up from everywhere and hit everything at the same time as it goes up into the atmosphere not just around you, but around everybody she's showing me. Everybody's getting these pulses of the colors, the, the red and orange and the yellow and the green and the blue. So beautiful. And she says, we're here in this area I take you to this vast land here, flatlands here, and here in the center, so there's this big, big open space that we can look out into. She says here in the center, here is where all of the possible fears, apprehensions, the shame or the guilt or the judgment for yourself or others in the different ways that you feel it, here is where we're going to be seeing it and putting it. I'm gonna take it from you. You're gonna send it to me from your rainbow to me here in the center and I'm going to absorb it. You're gonna see me absorbing it into my body and the rainbow's coming in from all of you. So again, to the left, as far as you can see with your uh, light bodied brothers and sisters and to the right, going out in this um, semi-circle going all the way around. Very, very big and in the center it's just, I just see kind of like, it's interesting. It's almost even like black ice or like, no, she says it's obsidian. Interesting. So it's, she goes, it's like a flat, round, 
um, disk of obsidian. And what does obsidian do? Obsidian absorbs negative energy. She says that is right. She recommends us all to have or wear obsidian, have it on us. Um, I actually have a, a an obsidian bracelet that I wear on my left side because it is very protective of energy coming in. It comes in from the left side. So she says it is obsidian. It's this big, big, big round disc of obsidian that she's that she's put into um, into play here. And and it's not very obsidian's not very shiny. I mean, it does shine, but it is more opaque. It doesn't glimmer or anything like that. Um, very, it absorbs light and 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 anything or n negativity. So she says everything um, of the lower level energies we're going to be sending from our activated uh, rainbows um, into the center. Okay. So she wants you to think of. Any fears that that come up for you, fear of she, money comes up first. Even though we've worked, we did the meditation for abundance and healing the money wound. That is always um, something to work on. So she's like, just start from from something very easy. Think about any fears you may have surrounding money or lack of money, or uh, anything about your finances, debt, owing people. Um, you know, the past hurts or pains or shame or guilt that you felt with not having money, uh, it going all the way back to childhood and things like that. Um, just think about, think about that right now. And she says, I want you to think about changing fear for money and the fear surrounding money into love for money, love for money. And she wants you to just create a little, um, what is this? It's like, um, it's like a jug. And she says, just label it money and put it right in front of you on the boulder and put whatever you think and feel about, you know, fear surrounding money in that, in that, <clears throat> in that jug. And she says, I want you to think now about fears surrounding um, love and intimacy and shame and guilt and judgment that comes around that. Love and intimacy and hurt feelings and being afraid of love, being afraid of love. Because if we're, if we're afraid of love and connecting and vulnerability and intimacy, we are just not going to have more of that come in. And we need that in our lives to be whole. We are vessels of love. And and love is not something to fear. It's something to revere. And we have things that have happened in our lives that, that make us afraid of getting hurt in love or feeling for people and them not, not taking care of us the way we need to be taken care of possibly or how whatever it is. So she says, think about fears and shame, guilt, judgment, ridicule, anything that is of the lower levels when it comes to love. And wanting to release that, wanting to fall like a fool for love, everything love, she says. She says, remember, she goes, I am love and I love you. And if you decide that everything of love comes from those of us that love you so deeply, unconditionally, your guardians. And she says, but I have such a special love for you because I am your mother. And um, just think about receiving that pure love from me and every other kind of love will filter through that. So there's nothing to fear and anything from the past. It was, it was there for a reason and to hold on to fears for those lessons will keep you from love in the future. So she says, please be intentional, put your fears into this jug and mark it love and whatever that is, put it there. 
And next comes failure. She says failure. When it comes to fears and judgments, resentment, shame, guilt, associations with pain, abandonment, and failure in some way, or not moving forward, not doing things just because you think maybe it's just not going to work or nobody supports you and just wasting energy and just things not working out or turning out or ending poorly or badly or having bad uh, situations with people, whether it was in in a familiar sense or a, a friendship or or even relationships we consider failure or work in work in our different creations jobs that maybe didn't work out and and or or anything that that we consider a failure we failed in some way and we have or we have a feel a fear of failure and we don't want to do things now or or move forward because we'll just you know, we just feel that, you know, maybe what's the point, it's going to fail or whatever. And, and, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a thing, right? So failure, think of those times when there was, you can think, oh, I did this thing and it failed. I thought wrong. I, I maybe, you know, thought I could do things that I couldn't and things, you know, didn't work out. And I feel like I really, really failed. And I, and I don't want to feel that again. So when we are afraid of, of failure, making mistakes, then we'll just tend to not do anything. And she says, let's remember again that child in the bed. Um, and let's think about how children, um, th- for the most part, until they learn to be afraid of not um, living up to expectations or what it feels to not win or whatever it is, they don't care about the outcome to things. They feel inspired and, and, and they just do things without thinking I'm not going to do this right, or it's, or I'm different, or nobody's going to want this and it's going to fail, you know, things like that. She says, so we need to tap into just being and going with the flow. And if we're guided to do things, if we're guided to trust, if we're guided in certain ways, don't be afraid that it's going to fail. Trust in the process and be patient. And she says, so think about those things, anything that's coming up about that failure. And again, judgment and fear and, and ridicule and shame that has to do with failure. And she says, and just put that in another jug in front of you. And that is anything for failure and of course these different things can be intermingled these different themes or topics can be intermingled she says but but it's just these things that that are normal for people to have um when it comes to fears and and this whole thing and she says next is the unknown being out of control fear of being out of control of judging the future, of projecting, of worry, of anxiety, of just not knowing. She says, especially for you now, she says, there's been so much of that you've been through of what you thought was and what is, and there's so much left that, that um, we, we are waiting for. And she says, there is the unknown. And do you take steps this way or that way? And how do you control what's happening and how to feel and these, all these changes and incoming energies that go on? She says, the fear of the unknown is really what holds people back the most out of anything else. It's fear of the unknown because you are not in control. And she says, so think of all the times where you've been and felt out of control. Things are happening and you can't control them. You don't know what's going to happen next or if you do or don't do something, what will happen? And she says, this makes people procrastinate. This makes people not change habits. This makes people not leave situations and and relationships that are not good for them, that are unhealthy or toxic. Um, and, and, and in many ways, 
uh, holding people back. She says the fear of the unknown keeps people in in jobs way too long because they they they're used to a certain thing. She says humans are creatures of habit. They like they like what they know and they don't veer from that often. She says it's time to let the fear of the unknown go. Because if you think about it, she says, when it comes to the fear of money, when it comes to the fear of love, when it comes to the fear of failure, she says, and anything attached to those big three, we have this one. This one is at the root of so much, the fear of the unknown. So we try to look ahead and that's what stress and worry and anxiety come from because we're thinking about things we don't know. We're thinking about the future. She says, she sees, she's showing me, she sees so many of us just sitting there thinking about the future and worrying and creating these these timelines in the future really giving our energy to try to know the unknown to try to have some type of um uh guarantees on things and she says that the more that you do that the more that the foundation of the timelines that are taking you forward into the future into your evolution into your ascension um those become weak because you're projecting your your fears um of all these different things in of the unknown into the future so she says that is really at the root of of most everything when it comes to our fears our fears our blocks our procrastination our judgments is about what we don't know so things and also things that we come across that we that are new to us and they scare us or they make us uncomfortable because there are things that we didn't know before and um, she says that's also a problem too because people are so set in their ways of what they think they know and what they know is right and if they haven't heard of it or haven't done it or if it's not popular if it's different it's unknown and they're afraid of it and they don't want to try it and and even if everything is taking them towards these these uh these timelines to discover new things because it's unknown it's unknown to them it breaks the foundation of what they thought was real in reality or what works or what or what doesn't she says and when it comes to people awakening in their spirituality they don't they have such a hard time believing in the impossible believing in magic believing in their own power and as and the ways that they can ascend and self-heal and like let go of energies that keep them um in in a certain place so they can move forward she says seriously you need to understand everything steps stems back to the unknown but that is the very um paradigm of being a human and what makes it so rich are the surprises so we need to change our way of thinking from ooh scary monster it's the unknown to oh it's a gift of surprise what's next i don't know exactly but i know i'm being guided this way i know what i feel i know that even if it's uncomfortable even if i never heard of it even if i have to give some faith to this and and move forward it's a gift into the future the future is all unknown even for those of us who have certain insights into the future into the bigger picture of the future the details that happen from moment to moment day to day we don't know we don't know and quite frankly it would be way too difficult to know all of what's coming we couldn't live in these lives and they would be quite pointless actually she says the point of these existences the point of being a human and going through this journey again and again as we choose to do to help each other and her all rise and evolve is to fall into the unknown of creation and see it unfold infinitely and to not be in resistance of it when we're in fear we have shame guilt resentment 
judgment for things. We are resisting our evolution and the evolution creation of everything that is connected. Think about that, she says. When we are in fear, we are resisting our evolution. We're resisting our future because we're whole, we're not moving. We're not, we're stopping the energies. We're pulling back. We're pressing on the brake. We're saying, no, I don't want to, I don't want to go that way. And the flow is forward. The flow is always forward and, and creation is always happening. Change is, is in every moment for us and everything else. So she says, you need to see fear as a block to your evolution. Fear as the stop sign, as the roadblock, as the literal wall in your way forward, because when you're in fear, you're not allowed to move forward into the unknown and we tend to get in our way over and over again she says let's think back to that first jug of the money and the things that happen with fear letting go of our money and being fearful that we're now we're not going to have enough it's not going to come back what are we going to do instead of being thankful and grateful for the money that we have and and uh and giving and and when we release it being thankful for that energy, I thanking the money, being in gratitude that we have it and we're releasing it because when we do that, what's going to happen? It's going to flow right back to us because we're not like, oh, holding on. And she shows me somebody holding on and holding on and holding on to their money and money, money, holding on and holding on and, and being even stingy with themselves, let alone anything else because they're afraid of the unknown and what's going to happen tomorrow if I let go of this money today. She says, instead of freely saying, I need to pay for whatever it is that I need to pay for, and I'm going to do this with gratitude and thanking the money and thanking the money and the person giving that, giving that money to, in whatever ways that we have to, to hand over that money, to pay for things, to give it with blessing and gratitude. So that opens the back door for more to come in because we're freely letting it out of the front door. And when it comes to love and anything associated with love, with love for people, family, friends, romantic partners, friend, um, business partners, the love that we have for what we do for ourselves, for being in love with us and and being our own number one cheerleader our um number one um fan and and mentor and person that says i i know that you got this and i love what you do because you know on the inside that's what's supposed to that's what you're supposed to be doing maybe other people don't get that but i know you i love you and just love for others and love for the the ways in which we we can connect and and give to each other and have that free flow if we're in fear of love then we're not then we're going to be resonating the fear of 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 love and not either not have it in our lives or push it away um with the people who do love us or not let more come in because we are not grateful for the love that we have and we don't love ourselves if we love ourselves and really really love ourselves let go of judgment let go of the burdens of not being perfect let go of guilt of doing things that that you felt like i should not have done that we all make mistakes. She says, now think of your mistakes. Next jug, moving on. She says, think of your mistakes, whatever it is, where you felt guilty, where you did something you were like, oh, why did I do that? Why did I say that? I shouldn't have done that. Now I feel bad. I let my anger, my emotions, my, my fear, my past, my future get me into a place where I acted irrationally. I did things that were unfair. Now I'm guilty about it, whatever it is. 
I did someone wrong. I did me wrong. I, I was careless. I was responsible. I hurt people. Whatever it is, your mistakes, your guilt. For not living up to people's expectations, for not being perfect, for not seeing things the right way, if you, if you put it that way. For whatever it is that you're connected to, that you feel guilty or you, you know, are your mistakes. And your fears about duplicating those types of things. She says, now extrapolate what you've actually learned the wisdom and the lessons from. Because if you've learned the wisdom and, and the lessons from them, then it's easy to let that go because you see that there was a purpose in it. But if there's anything left over that you still feel so guilty and you judge yourself and it's a huge, huge mistake, she says, again, this is where we need to see these things and release them. And if you can't do those right now, then a deeper cord cutting is in order. And that's a whole separate meditation. This is a different type of cord cutting. We're releasing fears, but we want to see anything that we're attached to that we're still feeling guilty and shameful about, where we feel like, God, I made this huge mistake and I just can't, every time I think about it or I'll wake up thinking about it or it just brings me down or anything like that where you're just like, or you feel in that sense, maybe you're a bad person or whatever it is. She says, these are the things that will hold you back. Aside from the unknown, it's, it's your past regrets, mistakes, and failures that hold us back. And it attached to the unknown and you not wanting to do things and mess up again. Again, she says, the human condition is about lessons and tweaking your your response your reactions your ways of thinking and doing your perspective that's the whole point she says look at look at a baby learning to crawl and walk and then you know doing things that they you could see them working out oh I, I shouldn't you know can't hold on to this it's not going to hold me up or that's that's sharp or you know can't stand on that and I can't you know my head, I can't go under the the coffee table because I'll hit my head or whatever it is. And it's just from the moment where we start moving as human beings, we're going to constantly be making um, what we call mistakes or doing things that weren't, you know, perfect or the exact perfect, uh, you know, line to forward so it's really important to let ourselves release ourselves from the uh, the chains she's showing us chains oh wow she says look look at look at us chained up just chained to the wall with all these she's like look at all the chains or the mistakes and the and the failures and this and that that keep that keep holding you back so again, think about that. All of those things. And she says with these um, themes here, with the money, the love, and the fear of the unknown, and, um, and mistakes, and, and all of these, uh, these things, we, we cover so much. And whatever else you can think of that that may go in there um and and again just you know not knowing or you know be feeling like you're unworthy all of these things she says that hold you back she says i want you to see these jugs and you also um chained it to them all of it <sighs> And then she says, I want you to one by one, and we're going to start with, um, which one are we going to start with? We're going to start with mistakes and things we didn't do right. We're going to pick up that jug 
and we're going to uncork it. We're going to hold on to it. And she says, with the power of the rainbow light through us that she sent through us, that the pulses are still coming through. She says, I want you to take your power. And when you open up this judge, you jug and look inside and look at all that energy. Just really take it in. What does it look like? And what I'm seeing is pretty dark. (laughs) It's not very pretty. It's pretty sad and pretty dark and pretty lonely and not the best feeling energy, to be honest with you. It's just mistakes and, and guilt and doing things wrong, whatever. So she says what she wants you to do is pull, is take your rainbow light energy and put it into the jug infuse the jug with that energy with that beautiful rainbow so just feel all of the colors going in the yellow the red and orange and yellow and green and blue and indigo and the violet just pouring into the jug and changing it and then she says what she wants you to do is just take it and hold it up and send it into that obsidian It's like an obsidian disc, an obsidian um, hole or whatever, but it is obsidian. um, And she wants you to send it. We want to see everybody doing the same thing here, looking left and looking right. And that energy just pouring out, going straight into the obsidian, these big little uh, arcs of the rainbow filtering through this energy and she says let me take this from you the burdens of your past the mistakes and anything that holds you back anything you're guilty of or ashamed of you feel you didn't do right she goes just send it to me let me absorb it in the obsidian with your rainbow light and i will transmute it i will transmute it and see all of that energy just soaking up into the obsidian and you can feel the energy going into Gaia and her and the electricity going out from the obsidian out throughout her body. She says, now we'll turn that energy into something else. We'll, we'll create with something else, very high vibrational. We'll put this energy into, into my body and it will be plants and animals and air and more of you, the energy of this beautiful divine light that comes from you. And she says the same thing we're going to do with the unknown. Pick up the bottle of the unknown, the jug of the unknown, and uncork it. And just feel all that energy of the unknown. And here it feels just very kind of void and a little, uh, (laughs) like, oh, I don't know. It's a little gray. And it's just like, I don't know. I don't want to kind of thing. She says just the overall energy of that, that like, apprehensive energy of the unknown she says same thing pour your rainbow light into it and let it fill up the jug and then send it into her and see everybody else doing the same thing and feel the burden lift of being afraid of the unknown Sending that energy into the center, just sending that energy and seeing the jug just empty out, just beautiful glass jug container empty, sending all that energy feel a little lighter, a little brighter, opening up energy portals to come in with the higher vibrations as we do this. And she's still sending up um, vibrations for all of our rainbow light. And we'll go to the next one for love. And take that and let's look inside. Taking off the cork and let's look inside. Let's see what that feels like. I don't know. Could be a little messy in there. (laughs) Could be a little of this and a little of that. But still fears coming and stemming from love in all different ways for ourselves, for others. And in every which way we can have fears, shame, guilt, judgment around love. And this time let's again pour the energy of the rainbow light into the jug. Let's see it just light up and mingle in with the with the energy of our rainbow light. Just really having the intention of healing 
these wounds, fear, judgment, ridicule, anything that has to do with love, relationships, intimacy, romance, sex, fears around all of these things, hurt around love. Just pour your energy into that, that rainbow energy, and then we're going to send it in that rainbow arch into the obsidian and let her absorb it all transmute it and see the electric energy go out from that from that obsidian grid out into creation and just feel in your body just a little bit less heavy less dense she says remember just to continuously have the idea of sending letting this go giving it to her and last one with the money let's get there with the money let's open this jug up and look inside again a little of this a little of that a lot going on here when it comes to money and the money fears judgment ridicule shame surrounding money lack of money fear of money all the things in which we could fear feel fear surrounding money lack of money not being wise or financially astute not not having it not being born into it whatever it is coming in with past life karma surrounding money the money wound that our parents instilled in us about being afraid of not having enough or having a a family line of people who didn't have enough and having that imposed upon you well, it's time to break all of that. So look into your jar of money fears and send in the rainbow light from your body and just light this thing up, transmuting the energy and going another step forward once it's filled up and sending it and giving it to Gaia, sending it into that obsidian grid and seeing all of the rest of us do the same thing with that really healing the money wound all at the same time creating abundance uh clear channels of abundance to come through to us and see look to the left look to the right and see your brothers and sisters just so much lighter and brighter having let go of all of this fear energy And just feel yourself, see yourself even floating above the boulder, not even sitting on the boulder, totally zen, release so much fear, so much fear in everything and all the different ways that we are attached to fear and fear holds us back so much so that we're floating here, levitating, see yourself levitating here, buoyant with light, with the rainbow light. And lastly, everybody is floating here above their boulders. And lastly, she says, I'm going to wash you with the rainbow light. We're going to hear the thunder and the lightning and the indigo light of the third eye and the violet of the crown above us in the clouds, in the electricity. You can imagine seeing storms that are violet and purple and see how that's connected to our higher awareness. And she says, now we're going to release the cleansing element of water. But instead of it just looking like water, it looks like strands and just lines of light with rainbow coming straight down over us, washing over each one of us, taking over the entire vista, this beautiful land that we see here, as far as the eye can see, just the rainbow light coming down, washing over us. She says, please take this loving rainbow light that I send to you through my body, through the crystalline grid, wanting and having the intention of bringing you closer, deeper, and more intimately in with me and my abundance matrix. Connecting with that beautiful divine light. (sighs) 
just see it washing over everything. Everywhere that you look is just these little strands and the water and the vapor rising up and it's all beautiful and rainbow light. And we are filled up with the rainbow light brighter than ever, brighter than ever, floating, floating and floating. She says, now everybody rise up into the rainbow light let's come together in the center let's create one big ball of rainbow light in the center with all of our brothers and sisters just blending together just rainbow light blending together you are the rainbow light I am the rainbow light and the rainbow light we are together. This big sphere of rainbow light here in the center, just blending all together and know that your health and healing and wealth and wellness is mine and mine is yours. My positive energy is your positive energy. My clear body is your clear body. As we heal one, we heal all. As I let go of fear of love and money and the unknown and my mistakes and the past, I welcome in the rainbow light to guide me to the future untainted with fear so I may go forward empowered, sovereign, authentic, and in love with myself and my brothers and sisters of the light accepting, loving, unifying together. She says, see you united as one, one big ball of rainbow light. And lastly, the sun shines through the storm, beautiful light from the sun shining upon this immense beautiful rainbow light sphere of the light bodies incarnate come together reflecting their light all across Gaia one big crystalline grid and ball and facet of beautiful rainbow light all together we are clean and pure and free of fear that holds us back in any way and our beautiful sun sending in light code sending through beautiful amazing infinite positive timeline codes for all of us together see it see it see it she says and i send out my pulses of light reinforcing this beautiful energy through each and every one of you solidifying these high timelines for each of you ready for this portal the 222 just open up to that divine radiance that blissful light coming in she said no matter in time when you do this open up to that immense energy coming through and she says just let the twos the ones come through, the one and the one and the twos, opening up the divine union portal and letting it filter through, no matter when in time you do this, reinforcing that, the divine union with ourselves, with our souls, to know to be guided in and through and to the light, closer than ever with Gaia, and each other. And she says, let us just stay here, connected in this ball of beautiful, infinite rainbow light energy, swirling and dancing all together. She says, like a beautiful crystal in the sun, just see it spinning and turning and sending off rays of light in every direction and feel it through your entire body activating releasing more and more step by step to your wellness your healing your higher self in every moment your evolved self your being self that was that is your soul. 
and having the intention of not letting fear keep you from your destiny. And she says, when you're ready, you can stay here as long as you want. Just flutter yourself, float yourself back into body nice and easy when you're ready. Take a few moments to think about the work that you did. You want to write some stuff down that came to you. Um, drink some water, do some resting. Think about this again and meeting again in that sphere of the rainbow light being sh um, lit up by the sun before you go to sleep tonight. And thank you so much for being here. I want to thank you, Gaia, for being <laughs> how amazing, the amazing mother that you are and us in our connection. I am so very grateful for it. Of course, all of the angels, the archangels, our entire spirit tribe, yours, mine, and ours, the high council, my... Um, my undying and forever love for all of you brothers and sisters and thank you so so much for being here infinite love and blessings don't forget the key is to create i love you already and always live in love until next time dear family i love you bye for now <laughs>